Hello friends, welcome back. This is Zombie Zoology, I'm Zombie Zebra, and our topic for Spoonie Hacks today is migraine and headache relief. So before we get started today, I need to address the fact that there are several different kinds of migraines and headaches and those kinds all have lots of different causes. So hacks and tips that work for one kind or one cause may not work for another. I get three kinds of headaches. I get cluster headaches, I get tension headaches, and then I get migraines, which is different than a headache, but it is a pain you get in your head. It's a whole thing. So the first hack I have for you guys today is something I call my bath buddy. Now, I don't just call it a bath buddy because it is my buddy and I use it on my back. It also is just the product name. It's kind of a cute name, don't you think? I don't know about you, but having a bad back my whole life has pretty much been spent trying to manipulate people into rubbing my back for me because my fingers are weak. I can't do that myself, at least not effectively. Let me show you how it works. It's pretty easy. You basically hook yourself by the shoulder and then just go to town on whatever knots, whatever tension, whatever muscles are giving you problems. There are also these nice knots all in it, especially on this side. And I use this for this muscle right here, which gives me a lot of problems. It is so tense. Um, so I'll, I'll hook myself by the shoulder, but instead, of putting the but instead of putting the pressure in the back, I'll put it right here on the top. And these little knobs, they don't even have to rub in very hard, but it is so sensitive right there that it, it, it digs right in. It's great. I could just sit here and do this for a while and just forget to make a video. But basically, this has lots of uses. This is basically the multi-purpose back massager tool. I personally found this to be life-changing when my pain doctor's nurse showed it to me and hopefully it can do the same for you. Our next hack is a little unconventional. You may have heard of it, you may not have. This may be something that you are absolutely against and would never do, or this may be a cool excuse to do something you wanted anyways. There is a piercing you can get that supposedly helps with migraine and tension relief in the head. Essentially, the piercer will pierce this piece of cartilage on the inside of your ear. The best test to find out if this hack is for you before you put a hole in your body you may or may not want there is to squeeze the cartilage on your ears and see if it gives you any relief. I personally find that especially when I'm getting tension headaches, that just holding like this for a couple of seconds can provide me some serious relief. Now it looks really silly, especially if I'm out in public, but I just tell them that I'm Dumbo trying to fly away and they sure leave me alone. This next hack is a little less convenient because it is not an in-home quick fix. However, it is something that I have found hugely effective if you have the means. Sensory deprivation tanks are something I consider to be an absolute marvel of modern technology. I don't even know if it's modern, but I consider it groundbreaking. Now, sensory deprivation tanks are obviously great because when you have a migraine especially, you are super sensitive to light and sound and even being touched sometimes. I know I get that way and obviously they take away that sensory overload, but it's not just that. While you're in the sensory deprivation tank, you're essentially weightless because you are floating in thousands of pounds of Epsom salt. Without even trying, you're just floating on the surface. None of your muscles have to do any work. You basically feel like you're in zero gravity. I've definitely fallen asleep in there before and I think it was the best sleep I ever got. Epsom salt has all sorts of great health benefits to it. I personally benefit the most from the way it relaxes joints and muscles. That's something that as someone with EDS, I highly value. Not only does it make you feel better, it also gives you, it almost feels like a caffeine boost for the rest of the day, but there's no caffeine and it's not that kind of scary, heart pounding kind of caffeine boost. It's you just feel more awake, you feel more energized, you have let your body completely basically hibernate for a period of time and it resets everything. It's really nice. So I definitely think that if you are able to, you should check out sensory deprivation tanks. The place I go is incredibly clean and everyone there is incredibly friendly. You shower before you go into the tanks, you shower once you get out, and they even had a little area for hair with hair dryers and brushes and all sorts of stuff to help you leave as presentable as you came in so you don't have to worry if you have a business meeting to get to or anything like that. You look completely fine leaving. You're not drenched in Epsom salt water or anything like that. I obviously can't vouch for the cleanliness of every establishment, but if you shop around, you should be able to find some pretty great places. I suppose if you're absolutely loaded, you could get yourself an in-home sensory deprivation tank, but most of us aren't. This next hack seems to be pretty universal. Most people I know seem to utilize this, whatever kind of headache they get but that is brain freezes. I have found that brain freezes 
are not a cure-all, but they're at least a treat-all. They can lessen pretty much any kind of migraine or headache that I have. Now, I personally like to give myself a brain freeze using Sonic's slushes or whatever gallon of ice cream we happen to have in the house. But if you want to go for a healthier option, cold ice water also helps. But what's the point of having a migraine if you can't use it as an excuse to eat sweets? Even if you find you don't have luck with brain freezes in your migraines, you could always just tell people that ice cream really helps your migraines so you can train them to bring you ice cream when you have a migraine. Pro tip. Please note, I do not condone the manipulation of one's friends. Please do not hate me, friends, watching this video. <laughs> I promise I'm not the worst. Now this last hack is one that I absolutely hated reading in articles or listicles when I was researching headaches and migraine relief, but it's true, unfortunately, and that is exercise. Now this doesn't mean you have to go to the gym and pound out a hard hour of grueling labor. I'm not one of those people trying to say that you need to go work out and lose a bunch of weight to feel better because that is untrue. You can feel good at whatever size you are. I find that sometimes just a nice walk around the block can help. Sometimes I don't even leave the house. You can literally find me some days just pacing around the living room. I'm incredibly annoying to live with. I don't recommend it. Now because I have pots, I often couple this with compression leggings or compression socks, which if you haven't invested in and you do have pots, I highly recommend it. Um, they just do a good job of keeping your blood from cooling in your legs. I find that oftentimes a contributor to my migraines is poor circulation. So the combination of having those compression hose on as well as walking or moving or something to get my heart beating faster can help me. This last thing I need to address, water. Water is so incredibly important. I will probably mention water in every single one of these hack videos because staying hydrated is so important. Now I know there's this Adam Ruins Everything video going around talking about how our bodies know how to tell us when we're thirsty, but that notion completely excludes chronically ill people. If you are sick in some way, it is so easy to forget to hydrate. So please, next time you feel a headache coming on, if you haven't tried it before, just as soon as you know one's coming, just chug a glass of water. It may help. It may at least decrease symptoms. Huh, why am I nauseous and have a headache and feel generally awful? Water. It's water. It's always water, I feel like. It's not always water, because if it was always water, then like we wouldn't be chronically ill in other ways. But you know what I mean. Water. All right, until next time, guys. If you are so inclined, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Share this video if you know someone who could benefit from these tips and tricks. The more you interact with my posts on Facebook, Twitter, or my videos on here, the more people who will find my videos and the more people I can help. Whether you are able-bodied, struggle with mental health, physical health, I would love to hear about your relationship with chronic illness down below. I'd also love to hear your suggestions for what Spoonie hacks you need, what problems do you need solved. I have plans to make videos for things like POTS hacks, EDS hacks, Chiari hacks, lots of symptom relief hacks, but what other lifestyle hacks could I help you out with? Let me know in the comments down below. My next video will be posted on Friday, and my next Spoonie Hacks episode will be posted next Wednesday. And until next time, be well.